Hi, I'm Penny Rukulos, and this is my AY fly story. I first started rugby league when I was five, six years old. Played for the Twin Willow Warriors because my dad um, wanted, me to play, wanted me to play soccer, but my mum spoke to him and said, listen, I want to play rugby league because it's, a, it's the first sport in Australia. I started off there for about a year and a half or two. At the beginning of the season, my dad got a hat with all these different sports inside. We had done a little raffle to see what sport we are going to play. So the first year was rugby league. So we started rugby league. I enjoyed it. A year on from there, we'd done the raffle again, and my dad really wanted football. I picked, he picked that football, which was his astonic, astonic, and was really happy. We first started playing for Eld Wanderers. I was about seven, seven years old, seven, seven, eight years old, and my dad was my coach. So we started off there. And then we found AYFI Academy, which I started there, not also, not just by myself, I started with my my sister Heidi and my brother Michael. We were there for about three to four years. I was on a full-time program there, so I was there three to four nights a week. But it was only when George first started his academy, so we were one of his first kids that started. And it was, it was, a, it was a great academy. I, it was mostly there for, for the fun at the beginning. And obviously after the couple of years, it changed. Our ability grew and we wanted to take football further. And certainly after we started training with George, Things changed. We didn't do that raffle thing at the end of the year because we we knew we we wanted to play football. Yeah, from there on, it just went uphill. So from there, I went I went to school Bosley Park, which was a football school. So without George's help, I wouldn't have been able to to, to get into that school, which that was full time also. So I started off there um, from year seven, and then I went on to play for Southern Districts at 11, 12 years old. Uh, then I started playing MPO level, which was, I was playing for uh, Blacktown City, also Sutherland Sharks, which I also went and played for uh, the Night Cup when I was about 13 and a half years old, which we won in Australia. And we went over to, for Australia in the big, in the big region in Europe. So that was in Manchester. And that's when I first got my first opportunity to showcase myself in Europe, really. That was a big experience for me. From there, it actually went really quick because the the tournament only went for one or two weeks, which is a big experience. And we played for in clubs against clubs such like Arsenal, uh, Manchester United, Barcelona were in our groups. From there, I came back to Australia and I got an opportunity to go trial for Barcelona because they saw me showcase my abilities in that tournament. I was there for a three three months trial, which went really well. I learned so much. To make a decision whether I would want to stay in Europe or come back home to uh, pursue my dreams to play in Australia at a high level or to stick it out in Europe. So I had an opportunity to go sign for a big Premier League club at the time, um, Stoke City FC, which I was uh, 14 at the stage. And I decided to make that big sacrifice and go over to to Stoke City when I was 14 for to your contract, which I would full-time football, but also going to school there as well. So I started off in a new school, which I've never really been to, with a whole different culture, all English, English kids, and I was the only Australian kid there. So I went to school three days a week and trained five days a week. So it wasn't really full-time full-time education it was th three days a week is I think is enough and also I did some some schooling at at football at the academy um, which was also one day a week that was a big learning curve for me as well after that I got my first professional contract at Stoke City when I was 16 and a half years old and from there it went it went up really it's what everyone dreams about really but little does everyone know it's it's not as easy as it sounds. It's a lot of sacrifice to me leave my, to, for, me, for me to leave my family when I was 14 years old, to go there all alone and to have no one with me. But it's what I wanted to do at the end of the, at the, end of the day and I had to take it with both hands and, and move forward, really. Three years on, now, now I'm 17 years old. My whole family decided to make a big sacrifice themselves. They didn't like seeing me alone and not having them with me at the time. And they decided to all come over and move over with me in England to chase my dream, 
So they left all their dreams behind for, to, to come and help me achieve mine, which I, which I really appreciated. So yeah, so 17 years old, they all moved over, which made, which made it a lot easier for me, which I obviously had my mum and dad at home ready for me after training to go home and see them. I had my brother and sister there, which also made it a lot different to me being alone. And, and also when I was there before, I was living with Diggs, who they're called, and it was like a family that obviously had to look after the, the footballers at Stoke. So family I didn't even know I was living with, eating with, which is a lot different to living at home with your mum and dad, and that obviously I had to get used to. I've done that for three years. So once I came, I obviously felt a lot more comfortable with my football, and I could concentrate a lot more on my football, and not really concentrate on speaking to them half half the day on FaceTime. And so yeah, I ended up um, moving up to the under 21s level. At the time, I was training with the first grade, nearly 34, 34 days a week, which was which was massive at the time. And Tony Pulis was a coach, and people always said to him, said about him, he he didn't give people kids chances to to play or train, which he, which is fair enough. But he did give a lot of opportunity for the young kids to come in and train with the first grade. I was lucky enough to be one of those kids. And at that time, also I had a, a call up to play for my uh, um, my country at under twenty level which was probably one of the biggest things for me and I'm so appreciative to to the national team and to the coach Paul Ocon at the time for giving me this opportunity. At the time things got a bit hard because I, I, we all started missing home. I ended up finding my partner which I, when I came back here for, for a break I found my partner and which, I, which happened from nothing. I was lucky enough to find someone and we'd done a year apart, which was which is very hard. So we did a long distance relationship for for one year, which made it even harder for me while playing football and having a long a long distance relationship with the person that you love is 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 not easy. So we all decided to pack our bags and come back home just to regather regather everything to me to be with my grandparents, to me with my friends, and just to be all together again, really. And I thought maybe if I come back, I'm just gonna leave all that basically I've done all that for nothing you know all the hard work leaving my family leaving my friends I decided to come back home and I needed about a year or year and a half to 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 regather myself and to get myself ready f to go back to Europe which is at the stage I am now and my plan for now is to to, to go on a th I'm on a three four month training training program with AYFI to get where to get where I deserve to be, so my plan is is to go back to Europe and pursue my dreams again because I feel my ability is too good to waste, and that's where I want to be because I I know nothing else. I've I basically lived football my whole life, so I don't see myself doing anything else. And my partner is telling me that she wants me to to achieve my dreams because without that she doesn't want me to to basically regret anything um, later on in the track but everybody believes in me which is a big with a confidence boost and I obviously believe in myself that I can make it to the highest level in Europe 22 years old now it's been now 14 years since I've been at George's Academy and I'm back here where it, where it, all, where it all began and for George to to still be helping me 14 years down the track shows a lot a lot about him He's only just a, a friend of mine, part of my family, and I appreciate everything he's done for me. To all the kids out there, it's a little piece of advice for me to give to you, is just to work really hard. Days that you're not doing anything, go out and do something. Go out and train, go out and juggle the ball at the park. It's all really up to you at the end of the day. How far, you, how hard you work is how, hard, how far you're gonna make, make it in a football career.